this magnificent book, De Humani Corporis Fabrica Libre Septum, The Fabric of the Human Body in Five Chapters, or books, was published in 1543 by Andreas Vesalius. He was then the Professor of Anatomy and Surgery at the University of Padua. And this, his greatest book, was published uh, when he was only 29 years old. Quite an extraordinary effort. Now, Sir William Osler, who's said to be the greatest physician of all time, he considered this to be the greatest book ever produced by mankind. In fact, he was so uh, in awe of the book that he kept buying them. He would actually go around all of the old bookshops in France and throughout Europe, and he would look and seek these books. And one of the uh, letters that he writes to Harvey Cushing, his colleague, his neighbor, later his biographer, and uh, he was a pioneer neurosurgeon and also a mad bibliophile like uh, uh, William Osler. Uh, he wrote to him in excitement in 1913 to say that he in fact bought two Fabrica on the very same day. But he thought that this was the highlight of the Renaissance art and uh, medicine, one of the greatest books of all time. And he collected so many that he often gave them away to very worthy uh, libraries, uh, usually throughout North America. So what is it about this book uh, in 1543, where nearly 500 years later, it still continues to fascinate? And not only is it a strikingly beautiful uh, book of an anatomical illustrations, it's a book which profoundly changed the course of medical science. It was an intersection of art and science. It was revolutionary and it was better than anything that had ever been published before. It changed the practice of anatomy. It demonstrated the value of observational science. And it was extremely important in the progression of medical science. And it was also a defining point in the history of printing and of the history of anatomical illustration. We only have to look at this magnificent frontispiece to appreciate the genius of Vesalius. The striking feature about the artwork that we can see here is the chaos of the scene, the, the extreme popularity of uh, public uh, anatomy uh, dissections at the time. But what comes out here is the superb technique of the artist. Vesalius would do some of the drawings himself, but he gave the artwork uh, to an expert. Uh, we think that the main artist of this work is Jan Stefan Kalkar from the school of uh, Titian. And he would do these uh, magnificent uh, uh, drawings. The drawings were then uh, given to expert craftsmen who would do these drawings, transfer these drawings onto wood blocks. And then these wood blocks were transferred over the Alps uh, to the master printer, Operinus, who worked from Basel in Switzerland. So Vesalius chose only the best for this uh, production. And in the end, five to 600 uh, editions were printed of which there are about 300 still in existence. This frontispiece actually tells a story. We see here Vesalius, who's front and center, and very unlike his predecessors. In the past, the old anatomist would stand on a lectern, the professor or lector. He would read from an ancient tome, usually Galen, which had been written at almost one and a half millennia beforehand. He would give instructions to the sector uh, who would open the body and, dis and display the parts. And these would be pointed out by this chap here. Vesalius had no need for these people, so that's why they're relegated under the table. Vesalius did his own dissections. This is very interesting too, the body here. 
The body is actually a woman, which is very, very unusual for anatomical specimens of the time. They were usually the bodies of ex executed criminals. But Vesalius is doing his own, his own surgical dissection and his own pointing out. And with him on the table here, we can see the tools of his trade, the knife and indeed a pen. So this was quite different, a revolutionary course in, uh, in anatomy. We see here this chap in Greek robes, and it's thought that this was Galen, who's looking away from Vesalius, because Vesalius had found so many mistakes in his uh, anatomy. And Vesalius thought that this was due to the fact that Galen had never uh, dissected a human. In fact, he used animals, and we see here the dog. So all of these tell an extraordinary and exquisite story of, uh, of anatomy at the, uh, at the time. There's some other very interesting uh, parts of this, uh, this book. Here we have a picture of Vesalius himself. And I might say that not all of the uh, original uh, uh, copies are in colour. This colour was thought to be uh, put on uh, at the time, but extra to the, uh, to the original black and white uh, production. We have one of his very famous skeletal uh, compositions, and you can see that he uses, in the true style of the Renaissance, you can see he uses the background to highlight uh, uh, his, um, his specimen. This skeleton, you can see, also tells a story He's holding a spade, digger of his own grave. And we have one of a series of what's been called the muscle men, an extraordinary example of anatomy and of medical illustration, the art form of medical illustration, which Vesalius uh, really excelled. You can see he's put this in a typically uh, Renaissance background. One of the other things about our copy here at the library is you can see the annotations. Some place along the line, somebody studied extensively from this book, and like we do in modern with our texters, he's written his little annotations to remember. We can see this too in the front of our book or in the back. Lots of notations about various aspects of this book which make just as interesting reading as the book itself. So this is the Magnificent uh, Fabrica. Now, at the uh, Rare Books and Special Collections, we've been working up to this rare book for quite some time. We have a few others uh, in the collection. We actually have, uh, we're very fortunate and to have an extraordinary collection of old anatomical textbooks. But where they relate to the, uh, the Fabrica and Vesalius book, in 1725, an anatomist called Albinus in Leiden uh, published a copy of Vesalius' works, and uh, we, have, uh, we have that copy. We also have a facsimile copy produced in 1964 and bought by the Friends of the Fisher Library. We also have uh, some of the plagiarised copies that appeared so quickly after this original uh, publication by a Spanish uh, anatomist called Valverde and by an English uh, engraver uh, called uh, Geminus. And uh, they did that. Uh, they actually plagiarised the works during Vesalius' lifetime and he was quite outraged by this. But it's, uh, it was a not uncommon thing to do. And uh, we hear that, um, that uh, you know, it was very, uh, uh, very common uh, to, uh, to use these because they were so spectacular and like nothing else that had actually been done before. The other interesting copy that we have in the Rare Books Library is a book published in 1932 called Icones Anatomae. This is really quite an extraordinary uh, uh, publication. It was a collaboration between the University of Munich and the New York Academy of, uh, of Medicine. 
And it came about because a very astute librarian at the University of Munich came across some old woodblocks and recognised immediately that these were the woodblocks from the original Vesalius publication. They negotiated with the New York Academy of Medicine and they used the woodblocks to produce a publication which only is the illustrations, no text, just the illustrations. And we're very fortunate to have a copy because the woodblocks were sent back to Munich in 1934. But sadly, the University of Munich was actually devastated by Allied bombing towards the end of the war and the woodblocks were destroyed. So there'll never be another opportunity to publish from these, uh, from these woodblocks. So we've cir circled around this Fabrica for quite a long time. So it's actually quite exciting uh, for us uh, in this library to have this um, magnificent copy all of our own. With only 300 left in the world, I could say that it's only very special libraries that have <laughs> such, uh, such a, uh, a, a copy of the first edition of Vesalius. And I think that we're very, very uh, privileged in Sydney to have such a, a wonderful manuscript. And again, it's the culmination of high Renaissance art, uh, medicine uh, of the Renaissance, which changed the course of anatomy and uh, medicine for all times. This is definitely a watershed area in the history of medicine, the history of printing, and the history of medical illustration.